Are you a small business owner or freelancer looking to establish a simple yet impactful web presence and quickly? If so, a one-page website could be the perfect solution for you. Hey there, I'm Aviva from Elementor, and in this course, we'll build and publish a one-page WordPress website with Elementor hosting in less than 30 minutes. A one-page website offers a straightforward and focused approach, allowing you to showcase your business or personal brand in a concise and eye-catching way. It's an ideal choice to make a strong impression on your visitors without overwhelming them. Elementor Hosting is an all-in-one platform that provides you with all the tools you need to get your website off the ground in no time. It's the only hosting provider that includes the Elementor Pro Page Builder plugin, the most popular WordPress drag and drop builder. Elementor Hosting also comes with the WordPress platform pre-installed, robust security features, and more. It's the best hosting service for your Elementor website and perfect for beginners. With Elementor Hosting, your site will perform great offering a smooth user experience. It streamlines the website creation process and provides your business with long-term sustainability. By allowing for future growth and scalability, Elementor Hosting ensures that your website can adapt with your business as it evolves. So let's take a look at what we'll cover in this course. Today we'll use a pre-made template kit to give us inspiration and our website structure. We'll adjust the kit to reflect our business and brand, and build this one-page website for a local bar and cafe called Spiked & Co. This website will have everything a potential customer needs to find out about and contact the establishment, starting with convenient on-page navigation that sticks with you as you scroll, an attractive hero and about section, a menu section with a selection of signature drinks and downloadable menu, an interactive upcoming events section, as well as a contact section, complete with a map and reservation form. Before we begin, I suggest having your website text and images handy, so you can add them to your website as we go. Let's get started. We'll start on the Elementor homepage, click Get Started, and now we're prompted to choose a design kit to kickstart our website. Here's a website for a restaurant. Let's preview it. Scrolling through, I see some parts we can use for our one-page website, and we can click through other pages to see if we want to use anything from there. I'll show you how to transfer layouts from one page to another during the course. This looks like it has everything we need to get started, so let's use it. Click Start with this design, Buy Now, and we'll complete our purchase. Look out for your welcome email to get exclusive access to our Elementor Beginnings Facebook group. Click Start Creating Your Website and choose a name. I'll call mine Spiked & Co. Then click Next. Once it's ready, we'll click Let's Go. This brings us into the Elementor Editor, where we'll customize our website. Let's take a brief tour of the Elementor Editor. First, we have the Elementor Top Bar, which gives us quick access to the settings we use most while working in Elementor. In the left panel, we have Widgets. Widgets are the elements we use to design and build our website. On the right, we have the canvas, where we'll lay out and style our one-page website. Floating on top of the canvas here, we have the structure panel. This panel shows us the structure of our web page, and we can use it to better understand and arrange elements and organize them on our page. Let's start customizing our website, starting with the site settings, where we'll define our website's identifying information, site logo, colors, and fonts. Click the Site Settings icon and select Site Identity. First, we can update our website's name and change the site description. Next, we'll click Site Logo, which brings us into the Media Library, where we can choose an existing image from our kit or upload a new one. We'll upload our logo by dragging in our logo file, and on the right, we'll add alt text to describe the image. It's a good idea to add alt text to your images, both for search engine optimization, or SEO, and for making your website more accessible. We'll go ahead and click Select. We'll follow the same steps to add our site's favicon, which is the little icon in the browser tab that helps identify our site. Click to save changes and go out to the site settings. Next, we can update our kit's preset global colors and fonts to match our brand identity. 
Under System Colors, we'll start with the primary color and click the color swatch to change it. We can then use the color picker to pick any color or type in a hex code. Do the same for secondary, text, and accent colors, as well as the custom colors. We'll scroll down to global fonts, which work similarly to global colors, but with typography settings instead. I'll adjust my fonts. Feel free to edit yours to suit your website. Let's save changes and go back to the editor. We'll begin at the top by selecting the header. Since our header overlaps the page, we'll use the structure panel to help us select the main container. The elements of our header are held together inside a container, as outlined by this pink line. We can think of containers as structural boxes that hold and organize our website content. Containers can hold widgets and even other containers. Right now, it's difficult to see the elements inside the container, so we'll change the container's background color. Great, now we can see the rest of our elements better. If we hover over the first element, we can see this pink outline and a pencil icon, which shows us it's a widget. We'll select the widget, and now we can see it's a divider widget. We'll click Style and change its color to contrast better with the background. Next, we have our logo, which looks great. And moving to the right, we'll select the next element, which is the WordPress menu widget. We'll leave the navigation options as is until after we finish designing our page, and then we can go back and connect everything but we can go ahead and style it now. With the normal state selected, we'll click to change the text color. Then we'll select hover and change the text color for the hover state as well. Let's select the last element of our header, which is a button widget. Let's close the structure panel for now. We'll update our phone number, then the link. The kit has already set the link as a contact URL. We'll click the wrench icon and we can see that the type is set to tell. So all we need to do is update it with the correct phone number and the country code if you'd like your number to be accessible internationally. Now when our visitors click the link, they'll be prompted to call the number using the relevant device app. Let's click the Style tab and with Normal selected, change the text color to Accent and set the background color to Transparent. We'll click Hover and set the text color and border color to white. Perfect. Since we have all our website's content on this one page, I'd like to make the header sticky so that as we scroll down the page, all our menu options will always be available. We'll select the main container by clicking its handle. In the Advanced tab, under Motion Effects, we'll set Sticky to Top. Awesome! We're ready to move on to our page content. We'll click to edit the page and save changes when prompted. Starting with the first part of our website, also known as the hero, we'll select this image and turn it into our logo instead. From the left panel, we'll click Dynamic Tags and select Site Logo, like magic. We'll click Style and make the logo bigger. We'll change the unit to percent to keep it proportionate with our site at any size display and set it to around 50%. Okay, up until now we've edited the existing layout of our kit. And now let's see how to add in new elements. From the left panel, we'll click the plus icon and drag and drop a heading widget right under the logo. Add a title, and we'll set the HTML tag. HTML tags are important for SEO, or search engine optimization, as well as accessibility. They help search engines understand the structure of our content and website and show it to more people in related searches. This is especially important on a one-page website, where we'll have several topics on one page. We'll set the HTML tag on this heading to H1 to show search engines that it's the main heading of our page. Note that there should only be one H1 on our one-page website. We'll set the alignment to center and style it. Okay, next we'll change the background image. Let's take a look at our container structure here. We'll use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control I to open the structure panel Inside the hero container, we have another container called a nested container, as indicated by this gray outline. We'll click Style, and we'll remove the background image by clicking the trash icon. I'd like the background image to take up the whole main container. So next, we'll select the hero container, click Style, and under Background Image, click the plus icon. We'll drag in a background image, and now's a good time to go ahead and drag in all our website images for a more efficient workflow. Great. We'll set the position to center center 
and the display size to cover. I love this image, but it doesn't contrast enough with my logo and text. So we'll fix that by adding a background overlay. We'll select Classic, set the color to Primary, and slightly increase the opacity. Classy. OK, let's scroll down. Whoops, can't see much here. This is because the color styles on most of the elements in this container are the same color as the background. So let's start by selecting the container and changing the background color. We can also go ahead and close the structure panel. OK, now we can see what we're working with. Next, we'll update each element's content and styling. And after that, we'll align everything nicely. We'll select the first heading and add content. We'll change the HTML tag to H2, since it's a secondary heading, and style it. I don't need the next heading, so I'll delete it. Next, we have an icon box widget. Select it and update the content. It's already set to H3, so that's perfect. And style it. We'll do the same for the text editor widget. We don't need a button for the About section, so let's go ahead and delete it. I'd like to have all the elements aligned vertically in one column. So let's use the Structure panel to see the current layout and how we can achieve this. Now we can grab each widget and drag it up into the main About container. I know it looks a bit weird, but we'll straighten everything out in a moment. Now we'll right-click and delete each of the empty nested containers and close the Structure panel. Select the container and, back in Layout, set the direction to Column Vertical. Better. We'll drag the Width slider to decrease it to about 800. Or type in a precise width if you prefer. Now let's increase the Min Height slightly to give our elements more room. Next, set Justify Content to Space Evenly. Unlink the gaps and set Row to 20 to add space between the elements. In advanced, add padding to the top and bottom to add some space above and below the content. Next, we'll add a CSS ID to the container, which we'll use later to link to the header navigation menu. I'll name it About. Now, select the icon box and in advanced, align Self to Start to make it flush with the rest of our elements. Great. For the next part of our page, we'll add selected items from our menu, as well as a button to download our full menu. When we were previewing the kit, I saw a layout lower down the page that could work for this. Scroll down to the most popular dishes, and using the structure panel, let's drag this container right below the About container. Double click the container and rename it Menu. And close the structure panel. Next, we'll duplicate the heading. We'll delete each of the image box widgets. In the widget panel, search for and drag in a priceless widget instead. Now let's select the main container and change the background color. Update the content and style for both headings and style the icon using the same method we did in the About container. Let's style the price list before we add the content so we can see what we're working with. We'll adjust the title, price, and description options, and remove the separator by setting it to none. We'll expand the item options and increase the row gaps. Let's do the first item together. We'll add a price, title, description, as well as an image. Do the same for the next two items. In Advanced, for the width, select Custom and set it to 40%. Now we can duplicate the price list and have room for both of them side by side. Go ahead and update the content for the second price list. Select the nested container and justify content to space evenly. Now select the main container and in Advanced, add padding to the top and add a CSS ID. Select the button and change the text. To add our downloadable file link, we'll first need to access the media library from WordPress. 
We'll click Command or Control E to open the Finder and begin typing in Dashboard. Hold down Command or Control and click Dashboard to open it in a new tab. This brings us into the WordPress admin, which we can think of as the back end or behind the scenes of our website. Enter the media library and drag in your PDF menu file. We'll click on our PDF file and from the right panel, click Copy URL to Clipboard. Now we can go back to Elementor and paste in the link we just copied. Then click the gear icon to expand the link options. Select Open in New Window. For the Attributes field, type Download, the pipe symbol or vertical bar, and the file name. Great. Next, we'll add an events area where we can showcase our latest events. I've gone ahead and duplicated the menu container, changed its background color, updated the headings, and deleted the price list widgets and button since we've already covered how to do this. Search for and drag in a flipbox widget. The flipbox widget has two sides. We'll set up each side starting with the front. Set the icon to none and add a title. Delete the description. Click background, set the type to classic and choose an image. Position it to center center and set the display size to cover. Now add a background overlay to contrast with the text. Click the color swatch and adjust the opacity with the opacity slider. There, that looks great. Now scroll down and expand the back settings. Add a title, I'll use the event date, and add a description. Remove the button text, click background, classic, and this time choose a color for the background. Great, time to style it. The front looks good, so let's skip straight to the back. Let's duplicate it twice so we can have three events. Go ahead and update the content for the other two events. Finally, select the main container. In advanced, add padding to the bottom and update the CSS ID. Fantastic. For the last part of our site, we'll add contact information and a contact form. Recall that our kit came with several pages and we can use parts from those pages on our one page website as well. I saw a few parts from the contact page that will work well for our site. Once again, we'll use the keyboard shortcut Command or Control E to open the finder. Then type in contact and Command or Control click on the contact page to open it in a new tab. Scrolling down, these three containers will work perfectly. Multi select them by holding down the Command or Control key and clicking to select each one and right click copy. Go back to our page. Scroll down past the events container and click the plus icon. Then right click and select paste. Perfect. We'll start by selecting the first container and changing the direction to row reversed. Then select the nested container and align items to start. Follow the same steps for the second container. We'll go back to the first container and give it a CSS ID. Then delete the second heading. Update the content and style for the remaining heading and icon box. Next, we'll add an action link to the icon box so our visitors can call without leaving our website. Click Dynamic Tags and under Action Links, select Contact URL. Click the wrench and set the type to Tell. Paste in a phone number and our link is set. Select the Google Maps widget and update the location with your address. Update and style the information on the elements on the right as needed. Select the button. Hover over the Map Directions link and right-click Copy Link Address and paste this URL into the link field. Now go ahead and style the button. Scroll down to the form. Add a CSS ID to the main container and update the content and style for the image and heading. Select the form and give it a name. Below, we have our form items, which represent our form fields. This form has most of the fields we need to take reservations, but we'll also need to add fields for the date, time, and number of guests. To work faster, we'll duplicate the phone item by clicking on the copy icon. Click to expand the new item and change the type, label, and placeholder to date. Set the column width to 50% so the field takes up only half the row. Now duplicate the date item and change its options to time. Next, we'll duplicate the message item and change the type to number and the label and placeholder text to number of guests. 
switch the required toggle to yes and set the min value to 2 to make sure they're reserving for at least two guests. Expand the message item and update the placeholder text. If you want to add more fields, you can click Add Item and adjust the settings. Now we can move on to Actions After Submit, which is where we can specify what happens when our visitors send the form. The default actions are already set to Collect Submissions, where we can view the submitted forms right from the WordPress admin, and email, where we'll receive an email each time a visitor submits the form on our website. To set up email to receive form submissions, in this case, reservations, we'll expand the email tab and type in our email address if it's different than the default. We'll leave the subject field as is, since it's already set up to show that the email is coming from a form submission on our website. We can leave the rest of the settings on their defaults. Feel free to explore the additional options to further customize your form. Now that we've configured our form, go ahead and edit the form style. Aside from the footer, that's all the content we need for our website. If you want to hold onto the remaining layouts on this page to use in the future, you can right-click Save as Template and save a copy of any one to your library. Then go ahead and delete the rest of the containers on the page. Great! Time to finish off our site design by updating our website footer. Click to enter the footer. Make sure to save your work. Let's use the Structure panel to help us select and edit the elements. We'll style the divider. Select the social icons, expand the first item, and add in our Facebook profile link. I'll change the second profile to Instagram. Next, update this link and the link for the next item, and style the icons. I'll style the other widgets in the footer so we can see them, and close the structure panel. The icon widget is set to take us to the top of the page, and to the right we have the WordPress menu widget. Since we have a sticky header, we don't need either of these elements. Let's delete them. Last is the heading. We can see it's set to current date and time. Click the wrench, and in advance, we'll update the aftertext. To finish off our footer, we'll select the nested container on the right and in advanced, align self to end. Great. We'll finish our web page by connecting our navigation menu. Scroll to the top of the page, enter the header, and save changes. We'll select the WordPress menu widget and click to go to the menu screen to manage our menu. We'll start by removing all the pre-existing links in the menu, since our kit has set them to link out to other pages. On the left, we'll expand custom links. For the URL, we'll type in the pound symbol, aka hashtag, followed by the CSS ID we gave the container earlier in the course. For the link text, we'll type in the text we'd like to see in our navigation menu. Click Add to Menu, and do this for each CSS ID we created. Click Save Menu. Before we go back to Elementor, we'll head over to the Pages tab and delete the extra pages on our website. If you want to save any page layouts before you delete them, you can hover over any page, click Edit with Elementor, and from the Save options, click Save as Template. Back in the Pages, hover over the About page, click More Options, and select Trash. Note that your page is temporarily stored in the trash if you need to retrieve it. Do the same for all the remaining pages, except for the home page. I also recommend leaving the Global Styles page so you can quickly reference your website's global styles at any time. Let's return to our home page. Click Refresh, and now we can see our updated navigation menu. Time to connect our domain and unlock our website. Click the Elementor menu icon and select Manage this website. This brings us into the Elementor My Account dashboard. The checklist here on the left shows that we've already completed 50% of our site setup. Click it, and let's continue to connect a domain. If you already have a domain, enter it here. Click Let's Begin. The next screen takes us to a step-by-step -step guide. We'll need to have our DNS and A name records from our domain registrar open and ready in another tab. Note that registration may take up to 72 hours, but it's usually processed within a few minutes. If you don't have a domain name yet, you can purchase one now. 
From your website, Hosting Settings at myelementor.com, click Manage Domains, click Buy a Domain, and enter the domain name you'd like to buy. Back in the My Account dashboard, time to finish off the checklist. We'll click Turn off Site Lock and Unlock Site. And now our website is live. Let's take a look at it through the eyes of our visitors. We can click through each of our navigation links as a visitor might and smoothly scroll to any part of the page. We can download the menu and check out these fun flip boxes for our upcoming events. Next, we have our contact info and map and our reservation form. And finally, our footer. We just created a sleek and engaging one-page website with Elementor Hosting. Be proud of your achievement and now you can share it with the world. We experience the flexibility of WordPress along with the power of Elementor Pro as we designed a website that will be sure to bring in new customers. And of course, with Elementor Hosting, we have the convenience of an all-in-one solution, complete with hosting, security, and performance. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about web creation and how to grow your business online. What type of website will you create? Share it with us in the comments below Till next time, see you soon and thanks for watching.